Okay, boys and girls, let's go ahead and begin our chapter four. Ring, ding, dong, honk. Well, Curly stamped her little paws in the puddle of paint. What's going on here? Henry ducked behind the banner. Spike shook with worry. <gasps> Piggly and Pugly, they lay to hide their paint-covered feet and bottoms. Wally panted, <laughs> trying to catch his breath. <laughs> uh, just doing a little painting, he said. These are our decorations for the party. We followed Captain Captain's orders. Curly took in the orange and yellow ship rails. The floor was full of pink and purple paw prints and the glitter that covered everything. This is the captain's instructions. She asked, really? Paint the banners, paint the doors. Wally decided to leave out the part about careful not to paint the floors. They had a little cleaning to do before Captain was up and at him. Luckily, he and Henry were experts at swabbing the deck. How's the captain feeling? Pugly asked. A drop of pink paint slid down his ear and splat. He's snoozing, Curly said. I wanted to make sure everything was going okay. Captain Redbeard was so worried about Pirate Day. This is my chance. It's my chance to show him that he can keep his trust on me because everything is rolling right along. Even without him. Everything is fine, Wally said quickly. Mm -hmm. It is. Everything is fine. He'd lost the secret code sheet. But they hadn't had any trouble cracking the captain's first code. That he was pretty sure that they could figure out the rest of the captain's instructions. All they needed was a little bit of time. Just taking a quick break for a game of fetch. Want to join us? <gasps> Curly jumped. That's the captain's bell, she explained. I tried a little bell. I tied a little bell around his neck and told him if he needed anything, he could ring for me. Another bell sounded deeper and quieter than the first. The pups all picked up their ears. A third bell followed quickly by... Spike hid behind and over a turned crate. What is that honking? He, Henry winked his nose and looked around. There aren't any geese on board our ship. At least I don't think so. Curly closed her eyes and took a deep breath. I gave old salt and steak eye bells. Marshmallow has a horn. I ran out of the bells. There weren't enough for all of the sick pups. Bells and horns rang out from all the corners of the ship. It sounded like every sick puppy on board needed something. I'm coming, Curly howled. Ow! 
she looked frazzled. Everyone wants something, and the captain wants everything. I'm just one pup. When I'm supposed, what am I supposed to do? Wally looked at the at the paint that was splattered on the ship, and thought, "Hmm, how much cleaning they had to do, and how many pirate day codes." They still had to crack. Then he looked at Curly, who seemed like she had it. The bells got louder and louder and louder. Curly wasn't the only one who wasn't sure what to do.、Mm -mm. Party planning can wait. Wally said suddenly, "They would crack the codes later." Curly needed him. The captains needed him. Nurses Wally and Henry. Reporting for duty. Okay, boys and girls, that is the end of our chapter, and I am really pleased that you were able to join us today.、Um, I hope you liked the chapter, learning. About the new conflict that was introduced. Remember, I said conflict is a version of a problem. I look forward to reading the next chapter and perhaps finding out what the resolution, how they fix it is. And remember, Mrs. Morris always says that you, in every story, there is a conflict, and usually the plot revolves around finding the solution to that conflict. So stay tuned because we have a little video to follow. Ship ahoy, mates! Hi, boys and girls. So let's go ahead and continue discussing the story elements for today's chapter. Story elements. Story elements are the different parts to a fictional story. Conflict is an important story element. And it's the one that we're discussing today. Every story, boys and girls, has a conflict. The conflict is the struggle between the main character and the opposing force. If you look at this picture in this nonfiction little skit,、um, the two girls are at a birthday party and they're so excited. They have their paper plates, their hats. And they are ready to enjoy a piece of cake. Let's watch and see what happens. So, as you could see, it really wasn't a piece of cake. The problem was, it was a cannon, and it shot out the interior of the cake to the girls. It's a silly problem. So as I said, every non-fictional story has a problem, and when the problem gets resolved, it's fixed. It basically tells us the plot of the story. So once again, a conflict is an essential story element, and holds a story together with. Without a conflict, it's really hard to keep that plot together. Thanks. Be sure to subscribe and click a thumbs up if you like our digital learning experience. Bye for now.